All right, guys, good morning. What's up? Look around the room. These are your people. These are all the people that are trying to do the same thing that you're doing. I just, I really, I really quick, guys, listen, I wanna, I wanna unpack culture to you. Who's, um, who knows someone that's religious? Okay. Who knows someone that's Spanish? Who knows someone that's black? Who knows someone that's white? Who knows someone that loves sports? All, all of those things, people, communities, countries, religions, sports, they have culture. And culture is a wonderful and beautiful thing. It's very diverse, right? And sometimes in the industry, we talk about culture and we say, what's the culture? And is it like the sales culture? Is it this? Culture is easily definable. It's a group of people who come together and believe in the same things, that do the same things together. Whether that's, they all believe in intellect, growth, spirituality, happiness, abundance, right? Or they, you know, they're in the sports world, whatever that is. I believe in Legacy's culture, and I think our culture as a unified group should literally be the mission statement because that's ultimately what this career is, is it's human development. And the middle of the mission statement is becoming the best version of yourself while helping other people to do the same. That should be our culture. And when you think about internally, what does that mean for you? It's gonna be different for each of us. You are in a different chapter, page in your book of your life than I am. But when you think about yourself, are you reading enough? Are you taking in enough content? Are you caring enough? Are you giving enough? Are you adding value to other human beings in your life by being a good human being? Are you living a life that makes you proud of your own actions? And this is, you know, happiness is a lot found in the review mirror. If you're not happy with certain things, that's part of the becoming the best version of yourself. It's not about being perfect. It's being on the same track trying to do things. So when I say like look around the room, that's what everybody here should be involved in, is the culture of becoming the best versions of themselves and helping other people to do the same. You should be reading. You should be an influence. You should be working hard. You should be spiritually fit and not necessarily just always God, but spiritually fit that you can live with yourself and your actions and how you treat people and how you treat homeowners and how you treat your family and how you treat your kids and how you treat your spouses. That's spiritual fitness. And if it's not good enough, make it better because that's part of the journey. So I just said, I want that to be our culture, right? Like I, I hope that everybody is in continued education. I can't express enough the amount of knowledge and strength and wisdom and love and gratitude that I have gained from continuing my education on a daily basis. Podcasts, books, listening, going to Tony Robbins or MW3 or the, you know, I just, I wanna know more. I wanna be around people who are doing more. I don't have negative people in my life. Like you are the people I want in my life. People on the same track with the same culture. So please, like let part of the culture be continued education and let that be part of you becoming the best version of yourself. I was listening to a podcast with Casey today and Ty, it's a really good one. If you, anybody wants it, let me know. And they were talking about the moment that they actually went all in on this career is the moment when things changed because the career ultimately becomes self-development and we also sell stuff because leadership is influence and the more influential you are, the more leadership you have, the more value. Success is not just money. Success is becoming a person of value to other human beings. Like when you're gone, they're not gonna come up to the little stand and say how much money you made. Hopefully you have a lot of people talking about how much value you added to their life, what kind of person you, you were, how much you did for people, how you raised your children, how you were to your spouses, like how much value you brought to the world, and that's what carries your memory on. 
So work on that on a daily and realize like, I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, but I want that to be our culture. So I'm gonna talk about this today, guys. I'm not gonna do the big rah-rah today. What I want to do is I want everybody to think of, and I'm gonna ask a few people to share if they're willing to. I want you to think of a time in your life where you were going through an incredibly hard thing and you wanted to quit and you didn't. So everybody just put your hands on your knees for a minute and search your mind for that moment. Something that was really, really hard and you wanted to quit and you didn't. Think about the moment just for a minute. If you found it, think about it. Think about the people that were there and the situation and how you felt. Think of how you felt when you wanted to quit. Think of what made you want to quit. And I want you to think about what you learned when you didn't quit. Thank you for being vulnerable. So if anybody's never, if you've ever read the book, Daring Greatly, Daring Greatly is a, a portion of a speech given by Theodore Roosevelt in the Paris Accord called um, The Man in the Arena. And what it says is like, it, it doesn't matter if you fail, dare greatly to be vulnerable. And what Brene Brown says is that being vulnerable is the strongest characteristic that a human being can have because it's the scariest thing to do. So thank you for being vulnerable. And I, that's another reason like, you can't be vulnerable with people you can't trust with the information. And that should be part of our culture. Like being able to trust each other when we're scared, when we're frightened, when we have anxiety, when we have fear, that we have people that understand that and that can help us walk through that, right? It's important, so thank you. So the, the point of this for you guys is, you know, I have a different view of the industry, but I've been in every aspect of the industry. I remember when I was on doors, full time, years, I used to just picture myself, like, you remember, I think it was World War I or World War II when they were in the foxholes? And I used to think, like, who dug those foxholes? Because there wasn't bulldozers, it was just guys with shovels. And I used to just picture myself like in that foxhole, digging a foxhole like uphill. And that somehow, sometimes doors can feel like that. Sometimes the company can feel like that. Sometimes the repetitivism, we just have a shovel out and you're just doing work. You're just doing work, just doing work. And so what I'm saying, when I'm saying I have a different view, I have a different view because I'm watching the foxholes be dug and I, I can see all of the battleground, right? And what's changed, I just wanted to go over this a little bit with you guys on a, on a big level, because what I wanna talk about is the size of your commitment is going to determine how you view problems. Big commitments make big problems seem small. Low commitments, even the smallest problem can seem insurmountable. Another, another problem, another, pro, another problem, oh my God, another problem. Lace up. You said for the guys that are, me, right now, problems. I'm facing problems with integrity, like having to be a human with integrity over money right now in my life, and I don't want to, and I did it. It's a, it's, I'm facing a problem where I have two options. These things don't change. You just learn to carry more weight. And so I'm gonna explain some of the things. Some of you have heard me say this. I wanna remind everybody, because I'm talking to a lot of people in the industry from a lot of different companies, and the industry's going through changes. So the way that you, if you've heard me talk, huge fan of Covey, seven habits, but the way you see a thing determines the way you do the thing, determines the, what you get, period. And if you understand paradigms, two people can be viewing the same problem and approach it completely different because of the way they view the problem. One person can think it's insurmountable. Another person can think, this is just part of this journey and it's hard, but success is built off the back of hard things, okay? So I'm gonna go through a little bit of the industry from COVID, right? We all remember COVID. Who was knocking when COVID happened? Who just locked it up for 30 days? All of us were just like, I was Lysol on the bag outside and I would let it sit. 
I was like, I'm 40 something, like I'm wearing gloves to the, to the grocery store. I'm like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> and then in two weeks, I'm like, I'm not gonna die. And then I got it and I didn't die. And I was like, I'm fine. So COVID caused a problem with product, right? It sounds dumb. Anybody know about the microchips? Those things legit take six months to make one. That's why cars didn't have microchips. Those plants shut down and it backlogged everything. Inverters, you know what they need? Microchips. And then shipping problems and costing problems and everything and everybody and everybody's like, oh, we're raising Redland, this and that. And it's taking longer to get a thing. That was phase one. Phase one. Phase two was banking. Then, oh, all the stuff's back. We can get stuff now. We go into the warehouse here. I was walking on top of $400,000 in panels. We got stuff. And they're like, 0.99, gone. They're like, oh shit. Like, 1.99, gone. They're like, oh shit. They're like, 299, gone. And they're like, 26% dealer fee? 30% dealer fee. And you're like, oh shit. And then they're like, 32% dealer fee. And you're like, oh shit. And they're like, 38% dealer fee. And you're like, oh shit. And then PPAs, everything switched. That was a problem. And then what happened from that, cause and effect. We think things happen like they don't. This is finances, this is industry. We're in the energy market. There's a lot of moving pieces here from manufacturers to EPCs to sales teams. All of that transpires, the banks start taking hits, they have to start paying different, bankruptcy. Right, that's the phase we're in right now. We're in the phase of bankruptcy. Who knows a company that's gone bankrupt? Who knows more than one? I can name four just in Vegas. Titan did 200 megawatts two years ago. Last year they did 44 megawatts and this year they went bankrupt. When Titan went bankrupt, Goodleap alone lost $30 million. There's companies that have gone bankrupt in California that the banks have lost hundreds of millions. Across the nation, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars have been lost by banks to companies going bankrupt. What do you think the natural occurrence for a bank to do at that point is? Evaluate the process and put up safeguards and change the way they do banking. Yes or no? Does that seem logical? Are we tracking the timeline? That's where, you know that thing in the mall that says you are here now? That's where you are now. That's the industry. The reason I wanted to talk about this and one of my favorite sayings is just lace up because it's for sure not impossible. It's actually easy. Er, I think it's easier. If you're addressing the problem for what it is, adjusting to the reality instead of hallucinating on what it used to be like. Yeah, we used to have 0.99s. We did. We don't now. That's not real. Banks used to fund faster. Yeah, they did. They don't now. That's not real. If you just understand the reality and adapt to directly what it is, the hard thing that you're looking at becomes easy. If I'm just committed to solar as my career, the direct to home industry, we sell power plants. We use funding, we use financing. It's gonna change. Who's familiar with the real estate market at all? Who's familiar with how real estate agents get paid? It used to be that the seller would pay for their real estate agent and for the buyer's real estate agent. Is everybody familiar with that? The federal government just changed that. That's not how it is anymore. The seller is not required. And in fact, it's illegal unless they agree to pay the seller's agent. Do you think everybody in real estate is running around going, oh my God, I gotta quit being a real estate agent? Or are they just saying something changed and we need to adjust to reality? 
This is professional level thinking. This is commitment level thinking. It's actually gotten easier for me, for us, I think for your teams. I know Chris and Tyson, I know how they sell. When you sell good, clean solar and you teach homeowners and you qualify well and you price well, sometimes you're gonna make, you know, on a full Southie, you're gonna get a 3.8, that's great. Sometimes you're gonna get a 310, whatever's best for the homeowner. You're doing what's right. You're not one of the shit birds out there selling bad solar. All of this is just part of the game. This is part of construction. This is part of industry. This is part of banking. And I see a lot of people in the industry running around looking for where it's easier. Nowhere. I'll tell you where it's easier. It's easier where you have commitment. Anything you do that's hard is hard until when? You quit or until it's not hard anymore. Who feels like knocking doors is one of the easier parts of this job? Who feels like knocking doors is hard as shit? Be honest, raise your hand if you think it's hard. Okay, that's fine. The mechanics of something are difficult until you master the mechanics of the thing. And the reason that you're probably sitting in this room is you had enough commitment level to say, if you can knock doors, I can knock doors. And all of us went out and got our teeth kicked in in some other kind of way than the other people. And we were comparing this and that. We all needed to learn our own lessons, but we learned it. And then you're like, oh, that was hard, but now it's easy. And then you're like, I want to be a closer. And you're like, that's probably easy. And you're like, holy shit, that's hard. What do you mean manage a pipeline? And then at some point somebody comes along and goes, hey, why don't you go recruit one of your friends? You're like, what? Talk one of my friends into this crazy shit? And then they're like, hey, train him too. And you're like, what? And then that's hard. And then at some point you're like, man, I want a little team of guys. And then that's hard. And then you're like, I want a big team of guys. And then that's hard. And you're like, I want to, I want to be a DM. And then that's hard. And you want to be a region. And then that's hard. Lace up. Ask yourself how much money you need to make before you understand that making this type of money and the money that you want to make and becoming the person that you want to, it's not about making the money. My favorite quote is stop trying to make a million dollars and start learning how to become a person who knows how to make a million dollars. And the people who know how to make a million dollars do not expect things to be easy. Not a day of it. Does anybody have his kids? Who remembers when they were babies and when it was hella quiet, you were like, Something's wrong, <laughs> right? When life is hella quiet for me and I'm like, there's no really hard shit going on. I'm like, something's wrong. I'm just so used to it. And what I'm, what I'm telling you is that if you have a huge commitment, when the things come, right? My favorite Jim Rohn quote, don't look for life to be easier. Seek to become stronger. You're, you're going to live life on life's terms, whether you like it or not. And the reason I started this out with culture is because when you look around the room, you're surrounded by people trying to do the same thing, trying to find success. And I can tell you, if you would have gave me a piece of paper eight years ago and said, wrote down what you want, being a millionaire was not on it. I had $2,000 in my bank and full custody of my daughter. <clears throat> I wanted to pay my mortgage. That's what I wanted to do. That's as big as I could see. And in the eight years that I've been in this, this job, this career, this thing has molded me and developed me because I'm of the mind of, I'm gonna succeed or die. I've said that a lot, that's my commitment level. There is no plan, what, I don't even know what that is. Plan B? Plan A is to become successful as a human being, period. That's my career, that's my career. 
And so I want you guys to think about that. We, we did a leadership meeting and a closers meeting with um, all the teams downstairs to go through um, you know, pay and construction and how all these things are working. I want to implore, implore all of you. Who's heard the term side talk is destructive? Or cross talk, meaning like, even at me and Misty's level, we're co-regional. Like we can, I, we can get right into it, like, oh yeah, some bullshit. And then we start co-signing shit, and we're like, yeah, this is bullshit, right? You know who never says that to me? Luke, Doug. They will not co-sign my shit. They're like, yeah, what's the solution? Don't complain to each other. It's rookie shit. Even if you're a rookie, don't be a rookie. Start emulating the people you wanna be most like. Complain up, find solutions, talk to your leadership, talk to your closer, talk to a senior setter, talk to your DM, talk to your regional, talk to somebody who's not gonna co-sign your shit. I don't want anybody co-signing my bullshit in life. I need people in my life that are strong enough to check my bullshit and get me checked into reality and go, lace up. Why are you talking about the problem so much? What is the solution? This is part of what I want our culture to be. So listen, gang, you know, we're, we're down there and we talk to Albert. I can tell you that this EPC, engineering, procurement, and construction, this, not just leg, this crew, in Las Vegas is one of the best operations I've seen to date in solar. And I've seen some, I've seen some badass shit, some good, I've seen some good stuff. And I've seen some really nasty stuff. The basis and fundamentals of what we have set here are so strong, I don't think a lot of people even recognize it if they haven't been in other areas. Right? They say solar could be the, everybody's in the same storm in solar, but not everybody's in the same boat. We got a good boat. And when we look at what our operations crew is doing, how they're treating homeowners, the speed of install that they're getting, how they're acting, what they're doing, how they're pivoting on problems, how they're adjusting to make sure that we feel served as a sales team is like A++++. What the C level is doing, like, I, well, the reason I love Doug and Luke is because any of us could just fly up there and be like, tell us why um, designs are taking so long. And Doug will just open up. He's like, oh, check this out. And then you start to realize, like, the depth of the problem and the depth of the necessary solution and, like, how much they are actually working on every aspect all the way down to banking. We are adapting to Sonova because Sonova will not adapt to anyone. So we are one of the companies adapting to them because we are not, meaning C-Level, Doug Robinson, Luke Toon, Damian Peterson, are not just gonna sit around and marinate in the problem. What's the solution? Sonova won't change, we will. We'll try and do better. I'm telling you guys all of this because when you scope out and you start to see things from a bigger satellite view, and you stop complaining and start internalizing and then going up chain, you start to realize, wow, I'm actually with, and it was funny because Austin was like, don't talk about the company because everybody doesn't want to hear how fucking awesome it is, but I'm like, it's pretty fucking awesome. Well, I'm saying this because when you understand some of these things, you actually get to buckle down and have a bigger commitment. You get to buckle down and say, hey, I'm part of this team. And as a part of this team, I'm not gonna represent the bullshit. I'm not gonna represent the complaining. I'm not gonna, re I'm not gonna be the one, who knows somebody who doesn't come to core all the time? Who knows somebody who's late to core all the time? Who knows somebody who doesn't knock all the hours? You ain't gonna look at me and see that. And that should be you. I don't co-sign their bullshit with my bullshit. I don't compare myself down. 
and you shouldn't either. Have a bigger commitment, have a bigger purpose, be a part of the team. You make the culture, you are responsible for who you are as a human being. And when you see this as like the industry and you realize like who's been paid like three grand on a job? Somebody just went in a house for like an hour and walked out and everybody made three grand. Think about that. Just think about that. Like the mechanics of our job are like pretty blessed. And then you get people and when they start making a hundred and 200 and 300 and they're like, this is hard. And I'm like, yeah, welcome to the party. Like it's supposed to be hard. Success is hard, reading is hard, self-improvement is hard, going to the gym is hard, raising your kids right is hard, being a good husband or wife is hard, being a good friend is hard, being honest and having integrity when it's really, really, really hard and you don't want to is hard. Hard things are hard and that's what makes us successful. So that was my point with this day is big commitments make small problems. And I want you guys to all question, if you feel like you got problems right now, question how big your commitment is. This is, I have Jordan Peterson, I'm not gonna, he talks about marriage and commitment on this, I'm not gonna play the video, but he talks about marriage. And he says the point of marriage is that two extremely imperfect people are gonna get together. And they have trauma, and they have problems, and they have personalities, and they have egos, and they have self-will, they have all this shit. There's a lot of shit when you really get with people. The point of it is, is to say like, hey, I commit to you through all your shit. And when it's really, really hard, I don't just get to quit. Like, we're gonna figure that, and I love what you said, because we learn, but that's a commitment. And I'm just gonna tell you this, and I think I'll almost be done. Well, I don't wanna go, I didn't wanna go an hour. Well, actually, the food's not coming until 1.30. So one of my friends, Kenny Cox from Vivid, put this thing out years ago, and it was a quote by Vince McNeil from the NFL. And this is Vince McNeil's, because the NFL is a highly competitive sports market. And do you know how they recruit? Money. Do you know how the solar industry recruits? Money. Do you know how easy it is to switch when your contract's up? I quit. I'm going over here. Money. So it's very similar, right? And so these commitment levels matter on a personal level because the people who think like that always have a short-sighted vision and they always build short-sighted things. And I can tell you that the reason I run my podcast and I listen to so many is because I'm a true student of the game. I watch the game like sports tape. I'm trying to have $50 million because I know guys who have $200 million. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to become more like them. I'm not trying to make money. I know that if I can become more like them and know more of what they know and do more of what they do and put my feet where their feet were in the snow, then I most likely, if I don't die or quit, and the only way to quit is to die, I will have what they have. And the biggest thing that they have is influence. Casey Baugh has given me this much money, ever. He has given me millions of dollars in influence that have changed me as a human being, that have made me operate in different ways. So I want you guys like to focus on, on that. Like focus on the long term. So this is what Vince McNeil said. Every four years, I lift my head up and I ask myself three questions. Do I like the people I work with? Do I like the direction my company is headed? Am I fairly compensated? And if the answer is yes to all those three things, I put my head back down and I don't look up for anything. That's how I operate. When I came into Legacy, I gave Doug and Luke, I actually thought Vince McNeil, I operated on this paradigm, said five years. I told Doug and Luke, I'll be here for five. 
I've had a lot of problems. I don't have a contract, it's gone. It's gone, I don't have a contract, I do whatever I want. But I have a contract, I have a commitment. And so when the things come, I'm not like, oh, this is hard, legacy sucks, they can't change this. I'm like, okay, this is a problem with my team. How do I address it? How do I fix it? How do I change it? How do I make it better? How do I increase the level of my people? How do I increase speed, time, money? How do I address things? Because they're just things that happen. And so this is a call out to you guys. I'm not asking for five years. And this isn't necessarily just a conversation for loyal to legacy. It's a conversation of commitment internally and how you view things and who you want to be and what you want to represent and what part of the culture you're going to create and what you're going to be responsible for. And when you start to operate in life like this, life starts to operate differently. The majority of the time, I heard this quote, I happen to life. Me, I happen to life. It's very rare that life happens to me anymore because I'm in, life is happening for me, not to me. And the actions that I'm taking, that I'm in control of, my mind, my spirit, the way that I act, the way that I engage in something, that's in my control. I'm happening to life. And the things that are happening in life that I'm responding to, they're happening for me. And because of that, I start to become a different person. How you see, how you do, how you get. Listen, I'm proud of everybody. This market, the summer, oh shit. I knocked for, um, I remember I used to come home, Misty would knock with me when I was in alarms. And I would hate it because she would bring her purse and she wouldn't let me leave my car running. And I'm like, put that thing in the trunk because the car's running. She's like, well, somebody is going to steal it. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm not turning my car off. <laughs> That's how I would knock. I would just, my car was always running and I would go and sell deals and come out and my car was still there, but it was running because that's just, right? Like our market's tough. It has challenges. Um, the people, it's Vegas. It's, it's, right? But that's okay. That's okay. I'm proud of you guys for everything. Everybody in this room, ladies and gentlemen, like for what you're doing, what you're representing, for being here, like for Mark, this is a, it's, it's tough. And I love it. I love tough. I love it that it's hard. Who feels better when they overcome something hard and they've changed mentally and spiritually because of it? That's where your fortification as a human comes from. And I can tell you that the compound effect of that, the compound effect of that turns you into a different human being. I can just tell you this, I can handle hard shit. Like, bring it. I always use this example. Who remembers Lieutenant Dan from Forrest Gump? Remember when he has no legs? And he's just up on top of that mast, screaming at the hurricane. He's like, this is all you got. That's how I feel. There's times when I take a knee, but I'm like, sometimes I wake up and I'm like, this is all you got? Bring it. Let me have it. And you, you build that resistance from doing these things. And so when I say that I'm proud of you guys, I'll finish with this. I heard it relentless. I can't wish I knew her name. She said, don't compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 20. You're not in a bad place because you're not in my place. As long as you know you're in the right car with the right people on the right road going down the right direction, your chapters will catch up. As long as you're doing hard things for long periods of time, you're gonna become the person you need to become. As long as you don't allow yourself to quit and you get incrementally better over the time you're doing it. You will become the person you're supposed to become. I promise. As long as you don't quit and as long as you focus on becoming better every single day, it will happen. And I can tell you, it's never happened to me as fast as I've wanted it to. But it's always happened. And then when I get there, I'm like, oh shit, this is what I wanted. And then I'm like, what's next? Everybody, some of you heard me say this before, but does everybody in this, raise your hand if you don't agree with this. At one point in human history, every single human being on this planet thought the world was flat. 
And then what happened? Some dude got in a boat. <laughs> he was like, fuck it. If I fall off the waterfall, they're right. I don't think they are. What I'm saying is two people can be standing on a beach looking at the same horizon, the same water, the same sky, the same stars, the same sun, and have two completely different views of reality. That's how strong paradigms are. So I love what you're saying. Like, don't co-sign somebody's flat world reality, fixed mindset reality with who you are. Don't set yourself. That's what I call co-signing bullshit. Set your paradigm on abundance. We're all on the same doors. Who's knocked doors other people have knocked? Everybody. They're the same doors. Same paradigm, same horizon, same beach, same ocean. Do you think it's flat or do you think it's round? That's a paradigm, so I, I love that. All right, gang, everybody stand up real quick. We'll take it out. So we're gonna go, um, I'm just gonna do a repeat after me. So repeat after me and then we'll do a one, two, three legacy. So to start with, everybody repeat after me. I can! I can! I will! I will! I must! Do hard, things. do hard things. I love myself. I, love myself. I, am, good I am good enough. I am worthy. I am, worthy. I am, beautiful. I am beautiful. I am abundant. I am abundant. Okay, we'll go. We are on me. Legacy on you for three. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are. Let's go. Let's go.